Um, I, I'm going to reflect on this question of reputation, both as a practitioner and a provider of professional services, and also uh, on the basis of some of the conversations I've had with my clients, who, as Richard said earlier on, tend to be on the, on the larger side, FTSE 100 uh, scale companies, often in financial services. So they've been right, right, right in the thick of this. Um, my first observation is that um, Ukraine is a watershed moment in corporate reputation management and is a very important moment in the evolution of ESG. Now, ESG has uh, climbed up the agenda big time over the last few years, um, partly pushed by climate, but also um, now increasingly by other, other social factors. Um, and it's very important for industries like ours, professional services, because many of us have or uh, have had connections to Russia in some way or another. Either we've got affiliates in Russia or we've built businesses in Russia or we have clients who are Russian. And so that's causing a lot of soul search searching in particular sectors. Um, and why I think this is a watershed is because the West is not actually at war militarily with Russia, but it is certainly at war economically with Russia. And um, business is a battalion in that war, but it doesn't appear to me like it's been conscripted. A lot of businesses have gone right to the recruitment office and signed up uh, and, 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 and actually preempted government action by removing or divesting their interests in Russia. I don't think I have ever seen, in fact, I haven't seen anything of this scale happen so quickly in, in, in my career, which is 15 years, so it's not exactly an epoch, but it, it is a reasonably long time. And business has signed up for this war for, for, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, because sanctions have just made business extremely difficult to do in Russia. I've got uh, friends and colleagues who have, for example, just can't pay their people in Russia anymore. They can't transact business. So it's really hard to do. It's so hard that it's not viable anymore. But the second reason why this has happened is, is, is because of reputation. It's because of societal pressure. And what's happened, which I think is quite fascinating in this case, is that businesses have actually been ahead of public opinion often and not behind it. Uh, and before we came on, I was talking to, to the panel about uh, why I think BP is an extraordinarily interesting example of this. It's had a lot you know, long standing interests in Russia, but it's just decided, decided very early on that it was going to sell uh, off its Russian business, whatever the cost, even if that meant a write down of billions and billions of pounds. Uh, it had obviously judged that the uh, it was untenable to continue with that business and it would rather take the hit of billions of pounds than try to justify uh, justify ongoing um, activity in Russia and to try and negotiate the the sanctions. But, you know, oil and energy, that's right at the heart of this crisis. But where does Big Macs fit into this? And I think this is where this is very interesting. We're not just talking about people who are connected to the, the Putin regime or people that are doing business with oligarchs. This is about fast food for ordinary muster bites. And the, the, there, there is no longer any shades of gray in this discussion. It is simply business with Russia is bad. And if you're doing the right thing, uh, then, then you have to with, withdraw from Russia or cut your ties. And I'm gonna come back to that point in a moment. So these businesses have moved quickly to make these decisions. Um, uh, it hasn't been costless. I think what, what has happened here is that relationships, some of which are, many of which are totally legitimate, that have been built over years, um, have been cut off. And the thing here is there's no real playbook for this. Nobody really knows exactly what they're doing. They're taking the decision on the basis of a moral judgment. But the unwinding of this is an extremely challenging thing to do. But again, this underlines how important and how valuable reputation in, is in this modern world. That arguably 20 or 25 years ago, some of these businesses might have taken the decision to just ride it out and see what happens rather than just to cut, uh, cut investment, cut ties uh, and, 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 and remove their business from Russia. So I think from a reputational perspective, people have moved, businesses have moved very fast, but I think we'll have to reflect carefully on what's just happened in, in the future. Um, and, and I think that's 
crucial because many of my clients have been really focused on the E part of ESG over the last few years. COP26 uh, moved a lot of businesses towards race to zero and developing science-based targets. And that was a bit, that's a big business challenge for a lot of firms. Uh, a lot of my clients aren't in professional services. They have real assets, you know, whether they run hotels or they run defense businesses. So they've been, they, they've been dealing with this question, but even though that's challenging, at least it's science-based. What we're talking about here is something much more political, much more of a cultural construct, and is therefore much more difficult to quantify and to plan for. So how do you build an ESG strategy, a rational strategy, that can take account of what's just happened? Um, so for example, you might decide, well, Ukraine is a case in which we will decide that we're going to cut ties with Russia. But might you, under what circumstances might you cut ties with a Gulf state, for example, because of some war that they're prosecuting over there. So what does it mean to, 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 to make this decision? And I think we've got a, what appears to be a relatively clear cut case here, but can it be generalized? Um, how does this affect wider decision making for multinational companies that have got businesses interests all over the world? And I think where, where again, I think we need to reflect on this is that when businesses went into Russia in the 90s and the early 2000s, they thought they were doing God's work to some degree, that they were part of a, an investment story, a democratization story, a story of helping embed liberal capitalism to build a Russian middle class. And that has all unwound. And maybe that's been a process that's been happening over some time, but it's also, I guess, a uh, an important uh, thing to consider that you have to constantly reevaluate reputational risks over time and how they're changing. And sometimes that can mean some pretty uncomfortable decisions. So um, just in terms of advice, um, to the extent that you can, I think from a reputational perspective in the West, taking new business in Russia is now untenable. Um, investment is off the table anyway because of sanctions to a large degree. But I think what you have to do is look extremely carefully at your relationships and affiliates, maybe not just in Russia, but in other parts of the world and stress test what you might do. What is your playbook if a crisis unfolds in another part of the world? And why is it that you might be able to justify taking action in Russia to this de degree, but you might not take it in, in other places? And I think that's the longer term question is how do we consistently apply a business framework for making very tough decisions like this. Thanks very much.